nine animals. That look like leaves mimicry, in which an organism resembles an unrelated species, is one of the great marvels of evolution. Leaf mimicry is an especially clever form of camouflage, for some animals looking like a leaf serves as protection from hungry predators. For others, it is a useful way to wait in plain sight for unwitting prey. The adaptation is most common among insects, but can also be found in reptiles, amphibians, and even fish. Here are nine amazing examples of leaf lookalikes from around the world. Leaf insect, family Philidae, any of more than 50 species of flat, usually green insects, order Phasmida or Phasmatodea, that are known for their striking leaf-like appearance. Leaf insects feed on plants and typically inhabit densely vegetated areas. Their natural range extends from islands in the Indian Ocean, across parts of mainland South Asia and Southeast Asia, to Papua New Guinea and Australia in the Western Pacific. Leaf insects measure roughly 28 to 100 mm in body length. Females of the largest known species, Philium giganteum, may exceed 100 mm. Males tend to be smaller than females. In addition, females typically have large forewings, elytra or tegmina, that lie edge to edge on the abdomen. They also tend to lack hind wings and usually are flightless. The male, by contrast, has small forewings and non-leaf-like, sometimes transparent, functional hind wings. Females may reproduce by parthenogenesis when males are absent. Females flick or drop their eggs to the ground. Newly hatched young, nymphs, are wingless and brown or reddish in color. After hatching, they climb food plants, becoming green after feeding on leaves. Leaf mimicry often is elaborate among the leaf insects, with the insect's wings and legs closely imitating leaf color and form. Female elytra typically resemble, in their vein pattern, the midrib and veins in a leaf. Some species are even adorned with markings that resemble spots of disease or damage, including holes. Nymphs may sway side to side as though mimicking the movement of a leaf in the wind. Leaf mimicry is thought to play an important role in defense against predators. Some species possess rows of tubercles on their antennae that when rubbed together produce sounds that may also serve to ward off predators. Satanic leaf-tailed gecko, leaf-tailed geckos have long flat bodies with triangular heads and broad leaf-like tails. The giant leaf-tailed gecko, or common flat-tailed gecko, is one of the larger species. They have big marbled eyes with red concentric striations around the pupils set against a background of silver, tan, or gold. These lizards have a mottled pattern, with colors varying across species from tans and greens to grays and browns. They also possess the ability to camouflage with the colors of their environment as well as the shapes and vegetation of the forests they inhabit. Fringed flaps on their lower jaws and the sides of their bodies flatten against a surface, obscuring their outline. The increased surface area reflects and refracts light, breaking the line between the perimeter of their body and the surface beneath them. With these adaptations, leaf-tailed geckos can almost completely camouflage against dry leaves or the bark of trees. The Indian leaf butterfly, also called the orange oak leaf, Indian oak leaf or dead leaf, is found in tropical Asia from India to Japan. When its wings are closed, it looks like a dry leaf with dark veins. It is a spectacular and commonly known example of camouflage. The orange oak leaf is a powerful flyer and usually flies in dense forests with good rainfall amongst undergrowth and along stream beds. It is attracted to tree sap and overripe fruit and is also known to mud puddle. Much pursued by birds, when in danger the orange oak leaf flies erratically, soon dropping down into the foliage and occupying a stationary pose with wings closed, so that the birds are very often quite unable to find them. In such a pose, the butterfly resembles a dried leaf and is perfectly camouflaged. Megophrys nasuda is commonly called the Malaysian horned frog in the hobby, although common names include large horned frog, Bornean horned frog, and horned toad. These frogs are moderately easy to keep, as long as you can balance their ventilation and humidity needs. 
but can be very difficult to breed. Overall, these mostly brown to red frogs are relatively shy and have a loud barking call. They have excellent camo, blending in well with the leaf litter of their native forest homes. Housing adult horned frogs can be tricky as females can reach over five and need a lot of space to move around. A 40 breeder is adequate with larger being even better for a male-female pair. Make sure the tank is at least 16 tall, any lower and your frogs will bump their horns on the top occasionally, resulting in a bald frog. Exoterra's 36X18X18 tank is a great size for a pair and provides fantastic cross ventilation. Solomon Island Leaf Frog Substrate is suitable for this species with a water feature being optional but definitely appreciated. Make sure to at least provide a large water bowl for soaking. The frogs will trample any live plants that you provide for them, so plants that grow on the background or artificial plants would be the way to go. These frogs love large cork tubes or rounded flats. These frogs should be provided with a 5.0 or UVB 100 bulb, walking stick, order Phasmida or Phasmatodea, any of about 3,000 species of slow-moving insects that are green or brown in color and bear a resemblance to twigs as a protective device. Some species also have sharp spines, an offensive odor, or the ability to force their blood, which contains toxic, distasteful chemicals through special joints in the exoskeleton. In many species, the eggs closely resemble seeds. Walking sticks are unusual among the insects in that they have the ability to regenerate legs and antennae. The front wings of some species are short and leathery, whereas others have large, colorful hind wings that are kept folded over the abdomen. Walking sticks found in the tropics are the largest and most abundant. The longest specimen collected, belonging to the species Friganistria chinensis, measured 62.4 centimeters, about two feet. Other large specimens, measuring more than 30 centimeters, 12 inches in body length, belong to the species Phobiaticus chani and Phobiaticus kirby, which are native to Borneo. The North American species Diaphoromera femorata may defoliate oak trees during heavy infestations. The deadleaf grasshopper, also known as the deadleaf mimic grasshopper, is a fascinating insect that has evolved to resemble a dead leaf, allowing it to camouflage itself from predators. This remarkable adaptation helps the grasshopper blend into its environment, making it less likely to be detected by potential threats. The deadleaf grasshopper is a great example of the incredible diversity of nature and the many ways in which organisms have evolved to survive in their habitats. The deadleaf grasshopper's appearance is often strikingly similar to a dried leaf, with coloration and markings that mimic the texture and shape of a dead leaf. This camouflage helps the grasshopper avoid detection by predators such as birds and lizards. In addition to its physical camouflage, the deadleaf grasshopper also exhibits behavior that further enhances its disguise, such as swaying gently to mimic the movement of a leaf in the wind. This combination of physical and behavioral adaptations makes the deadleaf grasshopper a remarkable example of nature's ingenuity. Leaf fish, any of about ten species of fishes in the family Nandidae, order Perciforms. All live in fresh water, although some species may enter brackish water. Their geographic distribution is circumtropical, including the Amazon River Basin, Western Africa, India, Southeastern Asia, and the Malay Archipelago. The name leaf fish is applied specifically to Monocerus polyacanthus, a South American species that is known for its close resemblance in both appearance and swimming behavior to a dead drifting leaf. This species is about 7.5 centimeters, 3 inches, long, and is colored a mottled brown. It has serrated dorsal and anal fins that resemble the saw edges of leaves and a chin barbel that looks like a broken leaf stem. It lives in quiet waters, drifting about, often head down, and propelling itself with a transparent tail and pectoral fins. When feeding, it awaits an unsuspecting small fish or moves toward it slowly, taking it with a sudden gape of the huge mouth. 
Many members of the Nandidae family are popular aquarium fishes. Katydid, family Tadigoniidae, any of about 6,000 predominantly nocturnal insects that are related to crickets. The two groups are in the Suborder Ensifera, Order Orthoptera, and are noted for their mating calls. Katydids are also known for their large hind legs and extremely long thread-like antennae, as well as the thick, upwardly curved ovipositor, egg-laying structure of the females. The common true katydid, Pterophila camelifolia, produces the repetitive song for which katydids are named. The song is phoneticized as katydid, katydidn't. However, each species of katydid has its own rasping song, produced by stridulation, whereby the forewings, one of which is ridged, are rubbed together. Although katydid songs are species-specific, different species are able to hear one another's calls. Songs differ as to their purpose, being either reproductive, territorial, aggressive, or defensive in nature. When it comes to the art of camouflage, few creatures can match Europia meticulodina, a small moth capable of mimicking a dead, curled-up leaf almost to perfection. From a mantis that mimics a harmless orchid to attract prey, to a caterpillar that looks like a snake to fend off predators and birds camouflaged as toxic caterpillars, we featured some truly impressive natural mimics in the past, but the Europia meticulodina moth may just be the best one yet. Its resemblance to a dead leaf curled round in on itself complete with tiny leaf-like veins is just uncanny. If not for video evidence that this moth is real, I could have sworn it was just the work of a skilled image editing artist. Europia meticulodina is not the only moth that looks like a realistic dead tree leaf. In fact, there are quite a few of them, but it's one of just two species that can nail the look of a curled up leaf, the other being the amazing green rainforest moth. The craziest thing about this fascinating creature's mimicry is that it's mostly an optical illusion. Its wings may look curled up, but they are actually as straight as those of any moth. The curled-up effect is created by minute scales on its wings, which even replicate the shading of a curled-up dead leaf. It's kind of crazy, to be honest. This living optical illusion spends most of its time on the damp floor of forests in China and Taiwan.